The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello all and thank you for joining us today. On behalf of everyone at Mutual Innovation, it's a pleasure to welcome you to our latest webinar. My name is Claire, the Marketing Events Manager here at Mutual Innovation and I'll be your webinar host. In today's webinar, I'll be looking at machine learning and how you can use AWS SageMaker to quickly and easily build, train and deploy machine learning models at any scale. We'll be looking at the process, use cases, and there's also going to be a short demo to show you how simple it is to use. Uh, before we get started, just a few housekeeping points. If you have any questions during the presentation, please just type them into the question box on the control panel and we can answer them um, at the end of the session and we'll try and get through as many of them as possible. And um, without further ado, I'll hand you over to Narojan, who is one of our senior software engineers here at Mitra and he will guide you through today's webinar. Um, thank you, Claire, and welcome everyone to the webinar. So I'm Nirojan Selvanathan, and I do work as a senior engineer in the research and development uh, team in Mitra Innovations. So today we'll be looking into how we can build and deploy machine learning models in scale with the AWS SageMaker. So to give a head up to the audience, today's webinar we will look into basically what is machine learning and how we can frame a business problem into a machine learning problem. And we will also look into the process of building machine learning models. Then our research engineer Aishwanda Pereira will give a brief intro onto SageMaker's features and capabilities. Finally, Dushan will do hands-on demo with the Amazon SageMaker. So before, so before we deep dive into the webinar, let me walk you through our company introduction. So we as Mitra Innovation predominantly work with enterprise and entrepreneurs uh, with product incubation and digital transformations. We do also specialize in AWS-based technologies, and we are also a consulting partner for AWS. So let's start with the webinar. So for the beginners who are listening to the webinar today, uh, so let's start with understanding what is machine learning and we'll gradually advance through the topic. So machine learning is an application of an art artificial intelligence that provides the system the ability to automatically learn and improve from the experience without being explicitly programmed. So machine learning focuses on the pro development of computer programs that can access data and use it to learn from, from themselves. So, when we speak of machine learning, these algorithms and everything can be classified into three major categories. The first one would be supervised learning. Supervised learning can be thought of like learning is guided by a teacher. So we have a data set called a label data set and uh, that, that data set plays the role of training the machine learning model. Once the model is trained, we can uh, predict using a new data set. So this supervised learning can be divided furthermore into two categories. One is regression and one other one is classification. So these two machine learning categories have the common goal of constructing a machine learning model to predict the value of the dependent attribute based on the attribute variables. So the difference here is in regression, we will predict a real or continuous number and in classification, will predict a categorical value. For example, let's say if we are going to predict the sales of our organization in the next quarter, that would be a continuous or real value, for example, thousand or two thousand dollars. But if we are going to predict whether our shares would go up or down tomorrow or in the next quarter, that would be a categorical value. Simply it would be an answer of yes or no. So simply we can see some of the business use cases. So in regression, we can forecast sales and uh, do process of optimizations. And in classification, we can do image classification to identify what is an image or fraud detection, whether online payment is fraud or not. So these are some practical use cases of these two categories. Then we'll come into unsupervised learning. 
So un unlike supervised learning, in here we do not have a labeled data set. Uh, which means the models learn through observation and find structures within the data. So once the model is given a data set, what it tries to do, it, it automatically tries to find patterns and relationship in the data set. And it's, it will start creating clusters of this data set. So what it cannot do is, it won't be able to add labels to the clusters. So likewise, it cannot say this cluster is made made out made up of apples and this is made of oranges. But what it can do is it can separate all the apples from the oranges. So this is unsupervised learning. And some of the very popular use cases of these are customer segmenting, how to segment our customers, whether they uh, in what categories they do belong. So we can do targeted marketing or simply recommended system. So we can see them, see them usually in eBay, AWS, and uh, several e-commerce sites where they do try to recommend products to us. So these algorithms come into the unsupervised learning part. And finally, we'll come to the reinforcement learning. So this is a hot topic these days. You might have also heard in newspaper articles and news where the AI programs are trying to beat uh, computer, uh, like humans in computer games. So this is the underlying te technique which is used in all, all of these scenarios, which is known as reinforcement learning. So in here, the agent tries to take actions in the environment so as to maximize some notation of a cumulative reward. So this follows the concept of hit and trial method. So the agent is rewarded or penalized with a point for a correct or wrong answer. And on the basis of the positive reward points gained, the model can train itself. So after training, we can deploy this model in a new environment. Likewise, a new uh, in a game, we can deploy a new agent. So it will uh, learn through the environment and try to move, move, move through the game. So now we have seen what are the machine learning algorithms out there, the categories. Let's look into the use cases or the business problems. So when it comes to creating a machine learning model in an enterprise, first we need to think of a business problem. For example, if you take the sales domain, uh, if you can predict the demand, or if you can predict the sales for the next quarter, that would be a huge factor, uh, factor of advantage. So we can prepare for the unexpected. Or when it comes to the marketing department, if uh, how they can predict the customer churn, or how they can cross-sell or upsell products uh, based on customer's profile. So these are some very important key factors uh, when, it, when it comes to the business. So when we are trying to implement a machine learning model in a production, first we need to think of a valid business problem. Here a machine learning algorithm may add value to the business. Then what we need to, need to do is, we need to take this business problem and frame it as a machine learning problem. For example, how we can do it. Let's say for a sales prediction, what we need to think in terms is how we can predict the sales. What are the data points needed? For example, we might definitely, we should definitely need the sales volume per day. And uh, we might also need the inventory data as well as the weather data and the public holidays as well, because there might be a correlation between these data, uh, data, uh, data sets. So after identifying and framing this business problem as a machine learning problem, then comes the first phase of collecting and integrating and preparing the data set for our machine learning model. So this is why it's, it's of high importance to have a data strategy within the organization. And this is one of the reasons why data lakes has become a hot topic these days. And if you want to learn more about what is the data lake and what benefits it can bring to your organizations, please do look into our previous webinar we have done on the topic of data lake, uh, and uh, which is one of our homegrown product called Predict Your Data Lake. Yeah, this data lake is also built using AWS technologies. So have a look at it to learn more about the data lake. So after collecting the data set, we also need to have the 
system and uh, infrastructure in place to collect and process these data sets. So if I would say like in the final data prepar preparation stage, what happens is, let's say we are collecting a set of IoT data and one sensor is broken. So it might send empty or spurious values. So we might, we have to clean these data sets and to normalize the data set. So our machine learning algorithm can understand what's going on. So this is what happens in data preparation. So after all this happens and in parallel, we also do, should visualize our data set. So by visualizing the data set, we might find some interesting patterns in the data set where we can use them in the later on stages in the machine learning process. And the other advantage is we can also find out whether, whether our data is skewed or not. So the so by visualizing, we can like go back to square one and rethink in terms of how we are collecting the data. Then the second phase begins, which is the interesting part we are looking into how we do teach engineering, model training, and evaluation. So in teach engineering, by looking at the data, we should identify some interesting features and data points, and we should like, pre, uh, like feed it to a machine learning model to take the advantage of it. Uh, then after doing the teach engineering for our machine learning algorithm, we should also think in perspective of what is the appropriate machine learning algorithm to use. For example, even for simple sales, sales prediction, there are a multitude of algorithms we choose from based on the size of the data and the dimensionality of the data. Uh, for example, let's say if our data is too, too big, uh, big to be uh, consumed within a virtual machine, what we have to do is we have to do a use a parallel algorithm, which, which can run parallelly. So, uh, and when we are uh, training a model also, we should also do hyperparameter tuning as well. In the sense, each and every machine learning model will have a different set of parameters where we can fine tune them. For example, a learning rate can be considered as a hyperparameter. So we should be able to parallel execute them and find out the optimal value for this parameter so we can get a high accurate value for machine learning model. And after, creating the model we should also evaluate it whether it's, it is really accurate or not the normal process is we divide the data set into 70 30 ratio and we try use the training data set to train our model and the test data set to test our model which our machine learning model have never seen so this will allow us to get a good overall understanding of how accurate the model is and let's say our machine learning model we created is less than 50% accurate. So there's no point of using that model to make some intelligent business predictions. And you might wonder why it is not accurate and there might be several reasons for that. One reason might be, we might have missed a very important data point when we are doing the data collection. So the algorithm we used is not uh, good enough for the scenario we are tackling to. Or, simply the data is not, not enough for the machine learning model to learn from so in, when this happens what we have to do is we again have to go to square one and rethink our data strategy and we need to think of how we can collect more and better data and we might also have to do data augmentation as well so as you can see this is a cyclic process by doing this in a cyclic manner we'll come across an accurate model in in the development process so after developing a model, we should think of how we can productionize this machine learning model. So it's a different uh, phase and it has, has all, it has their own challenges as well. For example, we might not want all the processing and computing power which we needed in the training phase, but we should be able to scale with to the request. And we should also, we should be also able to manage the machine learning model versions. For example, if, if our data is getting updated each and every day, we should be able to update our model each and every day as well. So there should be a CI CD pipeline in place to do this. And we should be also able to monitor what's going on in the machine learning model and debug them. So this is the overall process when it comes to building a machine learning model in an enterprise scale. Now let's look into what are the tools which AWS provides here. 
to facilitate each and every process we have mentioned. So as we have seen earlier, data lake is used to ingest structured and unstructured content. So S3 is an ideal use case for this. Uh, S3 is also known as a simple storage service. So we can use it to use it as a data sink. After ingesting all the raw data, we can use AWS Glue to do the extract, transform, and load. So this will do the data cleaning, cleansing, and, and pitch extractions. So after this, we talked about something called visualizations. For that, we can use a combination of Athena, Athena and Quixel. So this will help us to like find interesting patterns in data set uh, and interesting what we need to improve on the, on the data set. And in parallel, we can use a product called AWS SageMaker, which will be used to model training, de deployment, and evaluation. So this is the product stack which is offered by Amazon and AWS to supplement each and every stage of a machine learning process. OK, now let's look into what are the tools which are used when we are about to build a machine learning model. So when it comes to the editor, in SageMaker, we use an editor called Jupyter Notebook. So it is a web-based editor where you can call, run and execute Python commands, and you can share it among your peers as well as a web link. And when it comes to general machine learning, we can use scikit-learn or Spark ML. And if it is deep learning, we can use Keras, TensorFlow, or MXNet. And keep in mind, this is not these uh, tools are not limited to only these tools. So AWS uses the containerization, all the models and algorithms are containerized. So we can prepackage all the any any machine learning framework. Okay. So now look, if you have seen before, most of the tools I have mentioned are open source tools. So you might wonder, do I actually need cloud for this? Can't I do it in my own in-house machines? Yes, it is true that most of the machine learning libraries are open source. However, companies build sophisticated machine learning models in-house are likely, likely to run into scalability issues. Because training real-world models typically requires large compute clusters. For example, if you are about to train a SNET or image classification model, it might take weeks of GPU processing time. So the barrier to entry, entry for bringing machine learning capabilities to the enterprise applications are high in many verticals. So the specialized skills we need to build and train and deploy machine learning models and the computational uh, requirement and also the specialized hardware requirements add up to the higher cost of labor development and infrastructure. So these are the problems that cloud competition store and some of the most of the leading cloud platforms which are AWS, Azure and Google Cloud are on a mission to make it easier for companies to leverage machine learning capabilities to solve business problems without the full tech burden. So one such product is known as AWS SageMaker, which is offered by AWS. So uh, I invite Aishmanta Pereira, which is our research engineer, to talk about what is SageMaker and what are the features which are offered by SageMaker. Over to you, Aishmanta Pereira. Thank you, Rinoja. So, I am Bayesh Madhapera, currently working as research engineer in uh, with Renovation R&D division. So, I will be basically talking about uh, what is an its SageMaker is, Amazon SageMaker is, and uh, what is its capabilities and what it provides for us. So, when it comes to Amazon SageMaker, Amazon SageMaker is a fully managed machine learning service with Amazon SageMaker data scientists and developers can quickly and easily build their machine learning models, and also they can directly uh, deploy them into production ready hosted environments. And uh, it also provides integrated Jupyter notebooks, which uh, easy access to your data sources for exploration and analysis. And also you don't have to worry about managing servers or you, or you don't have that overhead of managing servers. So that's what is Amazon SageMaker is. So let's see how it helps us when uh, it comes to training and building models. So when it comes to uh, training models in uh, SageMaker, you have to create 
a training job. So as prerequisites, you need uh, the URL, URL, uh, URL of the uh, Amazon S3 bucket, which contains your training data and uh, where you're going to uh, store your model in the end and compute resources that need to uh, build the uh, models during Amazon Sage Maker building process. And also, if you're using uh, your custom models, you have to uh, give the path of Amazon Elastic Content Registry where you store your Docker containers. And when it comes to the training process of Amazon SageMaker, they provide few options. As uh, uh, Nirojan previously mentioned, you have uh, prepackaged algorithms for clustering purposes, for classification purposes, for regressions. If you want to build neural networks, there are so many prepackaged models uh, given by Amazon SageMaker, and you can use it easily. And they have given the ability to use Apache Spark with Amazon SageMaker. It's simply like using uh, Apache Spark ML lib with Amazon SageMaker. And recently in the uh, AWS reInvent, they have released Amazon, uh, market, Amazon Marketplace for AI and machine learning models. And next come the very interesting part, uh, using your own custom algorithms and models in AWS SageMaker. That's where I think uh, we have to consider, consider more about and we have to dig deep and see what is it about because when it comes to us, when it comes to developers, when it comes to scientists, you have to build your own models and uh, you have to deploy them in SageMaker. So let's see how you take your custom models into Amazon SageMaker. So when it comes to deploying uh, custom algorithms into SageMaker, it uses Docker containers, which is a pre-package, all the uh, contents that need to deploy and train your model. So Docker is very popular within uh, programming and DevOps communities nowadays. Docker provides a simple way to package up and put into an image that is totally self-contained. Once you have an image, you can uh, Docker run, Docker use Docker to run your container based on that image. And uh, it's just like running your program inside a machine. Uh, the different situation is it uh, creates a self-contained environment for the program to run. And also you don't have to worry about anything where it's gonna run, you just have to worry about how to set up your program and how it's gonna run inside that container. So Amazon SageMaker uses Docker to allow users to train and deploy arbitrary algorithms. And uh, as you can see in the slide, for model training purposes, we need the inputs, outputs, and a training inference code uh, placed in uh, the Container and also when it comes to deployment process, also the pre trained model, uh, Nginx and Flask simple configurations. Flask, uh, it, it also contains uh, two endpoints, ping endpoint for health purposes, health check table purposes, and invocation uh, endpoint, which exposes our endpoint to the outside world. So that's how it happens inside Docker containers. So when it comes to deploying uh, models in Amazon SageMaker, you have to have three prerequisites. You have to have a model, as we previously mentioned, a prepackaged model or a custom model with you. So afterwards, you can create a point uh, configuration, HTTPS endpoint configuration. In there, you can uh, configure the endpoint to elastically scale the deployed email computing instances, uh, which will help you to handle the traffic during peak times. And afterwards, you can uh, create HTTPS endpoints. So that's about uh, deploying and uh, training your models in Amazon SageMaker. So let's look at uh, what are the other features in SageMaker that we have other than we talked. So they have given the ability to integrate your JIT repository based in uh, notebook instances into Amazon SageMaker. And as previously, uh, Nidojan mentioned, hyperparameter tuning jobs are there in uh, SageMaker now, and batch transformation jobs are there for you to use on your production environments. So those are the few features that I have mentioned are in SageMaker. So let's look at uh, some of the recently uh, released services in AWS uh, SageMaker. So I'll be first talking about AWS Ground Truth. It's a highly accurate training data set labeling service. So when we start the presentation, we talked about machine learning, uh, what are the areas it has, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and uh, deep learning likewise. When it comes to supervised learning, we have mentioned we need a labeling data set in order to build our model. So uh, labeling the data set is kind of a cumbersome work which takes time. So they have uh, identified that gap and they have provided us uh, AWS ground truth. 
So what happens there is it first send the data to human laborers and take the feedback uh, from them uh, against uh, labeling and fetch it to active learning model. This model will uh, retrain and retrain again with their feedback and it will help us uh, to label our future data with our production data. So that's what happens inside the AWS Ground Truth. So let's move forward. The AWS SageMaker New, it's deep learning model compiler. So what happens inside the SageMaker New is it will optimize the train model for target hardware platforms. So they have open source it uh, in this reInvent event. So you can use your own algorithms, you can use your own ML frameworks or, or optimization as you want. And the best thing uh, that we can take out of it is it's free to incorporate in any app or any device. So that's what about Amazon SageMaker Neo. So moving forward, AWS ML and AI marketplace, which is recently uh, released in the reInvent event. And we are uh, we are happy to be a part of it as Mitra uh, employees. We deployed uh, three models in uh, initial phase. So we'll be talking about those three uh, models in the next webinar. So now we have uh, learned a lot about SageMaker and machine learning. So it's time to get our hands dirty and uh, talk about and get into real world scenarios. So I invite Dushan to take over the presentation from your authors. Thank you. Thank you, Ashman. Hello, everyone. I'm Dushan Devinder. I'm from Mitra Innovation, and I'm currently working as an intern in Search and Development Division. Right. Right. Now that you have an idea about what is machine learning and what is SageMaker, let's go and run a simple machine learning model in SageMaker. So first, we have to go to the AWS console. In AWS console, you can simply provide the SageMaker keyword, and you can simply select the SageMaker service for me. Once you select the SageMaker service, you will navigate to the window AWS SageMaker console. In here, you can see that there are several categories. So today, what we are going to do is we are going to build a notebook instance, and using the notebook instance, we are going to run a simple machine learning algorithm. So a notebook instance is a fully managed EC2 instance that runs Jupyter Notebook. As Nirojan previously mentioned, Jupyter Notebook is a notebook that data scientists use, and uh, it is used for data, mainly machine learning purposes. So let's go inside to notebook instances. So you can see in here we have developed several notebook instances. Uh, over here, you can see you can create a notebook instance by clicking this button. So once you click that button, you will navigate to this notebook creation page where you can create a notebook instance. You can simply provide your notebook instance name here and let's build it as sample notebook. And once you provide your name for your notebook, what you can do is you can select the notebook instance type. So by default, Amazon SageMaker provides us MLT2 media, which is the cheapest one available in Amazon Web Services. So depend on your machine learning algorithm, you can choose what the instances type would be. I mean, if you are using a compute optimized machine learning algorithm, you can simply create MLC type instance. So if you are using accelerated compute type of algorithm, you can use simply a MLP type instances <clears throat> just after you create your pro create your uh, notebook instance type you can simply provide iam role for your notebook so by default amazon sagemaker provide us iam role so if you are using services other than sagemaker and sagemaker related services you have to provide a different iam role you can simply create a new iam role by creating uh, clicking this button so after you provide these three mandatory fields, you can simply create your notebook instance. Let's create our notebook instance. So once you create your notebook instance, you can see a success message on top of your window. So you can see that newly created notebook instance is in the top of our list. So you can see the status of our notebook instance is still in the pending state. So it is not activated yet. So it will take a few minutes to activate your notebook instance. So because of that, we uh, started a 
previously built notebook instance and let's use that notebook instance for demonstration purposes. So in here you can see uh, when you go to image classification, uh, what we are doing is today we are going to do an image classification transfer learning demonstration. Uh, what this algorithm does is it simply classifies the provided image according to a given category. So the method we are using is transfer learning method. And transfer learning is a machine learning a type of machine learning that we use for uh, providing a good model. Uh, one when we are what we are doing in transfer learning is we simply take a pre-built model, then we take the behaviors of that model to another new data set. In here, what we are doing is we are taking ImageNet pre-built training model, then we transfer our model behaviors to a new data set called Caltech data set. So the Caltech data set is a data set that contains uh, 256 different variations of categories and each category contain 8 200 amount of images so in here you can see what we have done in the first step is prerequisites and preprocessing in the first steps what we have done here is we have provided the relative permissions and provided relative environment variables for our algorithm in here we have provided relative bucket and prefix for our algorithm and after we providing these two permissions and environment variables what we have to do is we have to import the docker image from the sage maker so the name of the docker image is image classification so in this code segment what we have done is importing of the docker image once we import the docker image now we have the algorithm with our hand what we have to do is now we have to provide the new data set for our model in here what we are doing is we provide the url of our data set and we download that data set to our local machine and then what we are doing is we upload the data set to s3 so as aishman the previously mentioned your model artifacts should be in a s3 bucket so that's what we are doing here once you provide your data set to our s3 bucket now you have done the setup part of this data now what you have to do is you have to train your model so in this code segments what you are doing is training when it comes to training there are two type two things that you have to do when it comes to training first thing you have to do is you have to provide parameters for training second thing what you have to do is you have to provide parameters for your algorithm so for the first step we are training we provide training instance count training instance types and training in output path so when your model is trained it will save in the output Put path provided place. So after you provide in these parameters, we provide hyperparameters which are relative to our algorithm. So hyperparameters can be varied according to the machine learning algorithm we use. So for this specific purpose, but we are using these hyperparameters. So as hyperparameters, we are using number of number of layers, number of pre-trained model, number of chain, and uh, precision data type, learning rate. Those kind of things are we provide as parameters. <clears throat> so after we provide several parameters, what we can do is now we have set up the training process. Now we have to do is really train the model. In the IC.fit method, what we are doing is we train the model. So you can see that we have executed this code segmentation previously because when it comes to training, it will take a few minutes. Because of that, we have trained this one and here you can see the training result, train job completed, and below by seconds we have 438. So after you train your model, now you have a beautiful model with you. But you only have the model, your model is not deployed. So in SageMaker, they provide a special technique to deploy our middle model in their SageMaker. So we simply have to call IC to deploy method, and then you have to provide two parameters initial instance count and initial instance type when you provide these two parameters your model will be deployed in our sage maker account so if you go to the endpoints you can see that the parameters are there our created 
image classification endpoint is there. And if you go to the models, you can see that our created model is there. So just by doing that deploy method, you can simply deploy your model in SageMaker. So now we have done everything. Now we have to do is we have to provide an image and we have to test whether our data set provided data set trained according to the given parameters. So what we have done here, here is we have simply provided the URL of an image. You can see that image is uh, sushi. So let's see whether this algorithm works fine. So in this code segment, what we have done is inference. So this is the code where identify the whether the provided image comes under this provided category. So you can see the result label is sushi and it has provided probability of 0.741. So the result is closer to one. So if the result is closer to one, that means it's a good probability. So as you can see, this is the image of sushi and it has identified this as a sushi. So that's how we can simply run a general algorithm on top of SageMaker. So after you run your code, you can simply delete your endpoint by delete endpoint option, delete endpoint method. So once you delete your endpoint, it will remove from this endpoints list and it will be in the endpoint configuration. So if you want to deploy your model again, you can simply go to this endpoint configuration and you can apply the endpoint to our existing model. So just like that, you can simply run a SageMake algorithm and deploy a machine learning algorithm. So if there's any questions, no. Right. So that's all folks. I uh, hope everyone got a good understanding about what is SageMake and what is machine learning. In the following webinars, we will be diving deep on how to package custom algorithms. So thank you all for listening.